Rising to fame in the early 90s, Stone Temple Pilots, while commercially successful, were slammed by some critics for being derivative of the music coming out of the Pacific Northwest. Beavis and Butthead had one episode where both characters poked fun at the band. In that episode, the video for the song Plush would come on and the two characters would mistake it for Pearl Jam. They would go on to compare Scott Weiland to Eddie Vedder, with Butthead concluding, both bands suck, with Beavis firing back saying, Pearl Jam doesn't suck, they're from Seattle. Even Saturday Night Live got in on the ribbing, as you can see David Spade discussing the band on his old segment Hollywood Minute here. And in music, Stone Temple Pilots were on tour. They were great the first time I saw them, when they were called Pearl Jam. It wasn't just critics who threw mud at the band, as even their tour mates the Butthole Surfers also threw some shade their way. During an appearance on Headbangers Ball in 1993, Butthole Surfers Gibby Haynes poked fun at Stone Temple Pilots' sound, and host Ricky Rackman made some remarks that supposedly angered Scott Weiland. Here's a clip discussing what happened. Well, when you hear the acoustic version of Plush, that was done on our show. It was the last time things went smoothly with these Stone Temple Pilots. One time the Butthole Surfers were on the Headbangers Ball, and we were introducing Stone Temple Pilots' video, and Gibby says, Wow, Stone Temple I, Pilots, who does that band remind you of? Who doesn't it remind you of? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they were not happy with that. And Wyland just caused a huge stink. I guess Stone Temple Pilots were really sensitive to a lot of criticism at that time. Wyland wouldn't do our show, wouldn't do a whole bunch of other stuff. We were supposed to do a 4th of July shoot with them in LA, and that got squashed. The big stuff that he was supposed to do for MTV, he canceled because of what I said. My producer called me, and Nancy's like, look, everybody's pissed off at you. You know, you've got to apologize to Wyland for saying that. So I ended up calling a dean from Stone Temple Pilots and talking to him about it, and they put me in touch with Wyland. He called and apologized, and I'm sure that was you know, really awkward for him. And I basically kissed his ass. And they came back. And for the record, I think the new Stone Temple Pilots doesn't sound like anybody, and it's good. Guns N' Roses would implode in the mid-90s after guitar Slash, bassist Stuff McKagan, and drummer Matt Sorum left the group, leaving frontman Axl Rose to pick up the pieces. The departed members of Guns N' Roses would soon form the supergroup Velvet Revolver in 2003, with former Stone Temple Pilots frontman Scott Weiland. I've done a whole video on the band, the link is down below. It was during this time a lot of the press interviews focused on Guns N' Roses' history and adding to the tension between Rose and his former bandmates was a series of lawsuits the members were involved with over song publishing and royalties. 2006, Rose would put out a statement claiming that Slash made an unannounced visit to his home, stating, and I quote, Slash came to inform Axel that Duff was spineless, Scott Wallen was a fraud, that he hates Matt Sorum, and that in this ongoing war, contest, or whatever anyone wants to call it, that Slash has waged against Axel for a better part of 20 years, that Axel has proven himself the stronger. Axel regrets having to spend time and energy on these distractions, but he has a responsibility to protect the Guns N' Roses legacy and expose the truth. Initially, the guitarist denied ever visiting Rose's home, but in his 2007 autobiography, he admitted he did in fact go to his home one night under the influence. He would claim he didn't speak to Rose personally and instead passed a note to a woman who answered the door, stating that they should settle their lawsuit. Rose's statement would spark a rift inside Velvet Revolver's camp, with Slash admitting in his book he had to sit each member of the band down one by one and give his version of events. Meanwhile, Scott Weiland would put out his own statement slamming Rose, saying, and I quote, Get in the ring or go to the gym, mother effer, or if you prefer, get a new wig. I think I'll resist the urge to stoop to your level. Oh shit, here it comes, you fat, Botox face, wig wearing expletive. Okay, now I feel better. Don't think for a second we don't know where those words come from, your unoriginal, uncreative little mind, the same mind that had to rely on his bandmates to write melodies and lyrics. Who's the fraud now? Ironically, in 2008, Wyland would be fired from Velvet Revolver after the frontman's substance abuse issues returned and interpersonal conflicts dominated their final tour. It was after Wyland's firing he alluded in various interviews to understanding Rose's point of view with him telling Classic Rock shortly after his departure. When you think about it, isn't it ironic that the band is regurgitating the same story they did with Axl Rose in their last band, where the lead singer was demonized? Originally I thought, what a troll he must have been, what an evil man. But you know what? I have to say that I have an entirely different opinion of him today. Of course, the members of Velvet Revolver also make the list. After two albums with the supergroup, Wallen would leave the band. Appearing on the Howard Stern Show in 2012, Stern pressed Slash as to why they would even start a band with Wyland, 
knowing his past history of substance abuse issues, with the guitarist telling the radio host, Duff and I were like fresh out of detox, right? And we thought, we can fix this guy. You know what happened was, with all fairness to Scott, he was a mess when we got going, but we wrote a couple good songs. There was a lot of uncontrollable diva stuff, serious rock star stuff. You've got one guy that decided he's going to dictate to everybody what's going to happen and not even show up. I can't find my shoes in the hotel room. I'm going to get some coffee and wander down the street and then you can't find them. It's five minutes until showtime. It's classic stuff. The band would reunite for a one-off performance for charity in 2012, but that was it. Then in 2018, Slash gave an interview to Rolling Stone where he admitted that Velvet Revolver was no fun, saying, as crazed as that whole period was, I was still shocked to hear about Scott referring to his death in 2015. But yeah, Velvet Revolver was no fun. I have nothing positive to say about that experience except that we did write some cool stuff. Of course, we can't talk about Scott Wallen without talking about his relationship with Stone Temple Pilots, which was very tumultuous. While the band called it quits in 2003, it was towards the tail end of Velvet Revolver that Wallen was planning on rejoining STP in 2008, but his second run with the group fared no better. Wallen's substance abuse issues would hurt their live shows and create tensions within the band, by 2013, rumors swirled that Wallen was on the chopping block and was discussing possibly rejoining Velvet Revolver. Then on February 27, 2013, Stone Temple Pilots announced that Wallen was fired, something that even took the frontman by surprise. The parties would end up filing lawsuits against one another over the name of the band, and they would eventually settle out of court. Sadly, in 2015, Wallen would die while on tour due to substance abuse issues. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Ultra Stories. Take care.